Bill Clark, in my opinion, was ahead of his time. He was a leader. He was just a, a young man that I think anybody would want to be like. A great leader, a great man, and a great civil servant who gave complete, completely of himself to those who needed him most. And to this very day, we're all beneficial because of what he gave. And now it's our time to do what Bill has done and what he has always shown us, to give back. He was a man who, who really cared about people. And he wanted to see people's lives improve. And whatever he could do to do that, he, he did. He was a man of action. To know Mr. Clark, Coach Clark, Representative Clark, was to know a true hero who was here among us. And his legacy will live on as a great educator, a phenomenal statesman, a true humanitarian, and a real friend. My first encounter with uh, Representative William Clark uh, uh, upon graduating from college uh, in Morehouse, uh, I received a call from uh, Mr. Charles Farr, who at the time was the uh, executive director of Pitcher Housing, and Mr. William Clark informed me that they had a position available for a recreation uh, supervisor. And I so wanted to get back to, to Pritchard and Mobile to, to do some things to help my mom. And uh, after accepting that position, which was my first job out of college, uh, uh, got to know Mr. Clark, and at the time, uh, a vacancy came uh, available in the House of Representatives, House District 98, and Mr. Clark uh, decided to run for that position, and he uh, asked me to be his campaign manager. Uh, and from that, we developed a very good, strong relationship. Uh, he taught me a lot about politics, especially about uh, honesty, uh, about integrity, uh, how to treat the public, and, and how to really appreciate uh, the individuals that you were representing. Uh, so from that date uh, up to his last campaign, his first campaign, his last campaign, I was his campaign manager. Uh, in the House where he eventually became uh, a major leader in the House of Representatives, one of the most powerful committees uh, in the state legislature, uh, how fair he was with both sides of the House, Republicans as well as Democrats, and setting, in, in, in terms of setting the agenda for bills to come up and those bills that would not come up. He was very well respected, and whatever he told you, whatever his word was, it was his bond. Uh, many times he had to go against his own friends in the local delegation, uh, but as he told them that he was going to do what he thought was best and was the right thing, and he retired from office with that same thought process. And um, uh, it has allowed me in my role as the school board commissioner uh, to use the same type of premise that your word is your bond and you do what's in the best interest of the children. Yeah, don't do what's politically feasible. Yeah, you do what's fiscally feasible. Representative Bill Clark was a tremendous advocate for the Mobile County Public School System and for public education. Certainly a great void when he retired from the legislature, but he still influenced what was happening. Not to have that voice there, there is a gap because there are so many things that become before the legislature that it takes a real knowledge of education to understand how it will impact the operation of the school system, the schools, and ultimately the services that you provide for the students. Representative Clark was always there to guide uh, that process and to make sure that education for every student at a quality level was in place. And that voice is very difficult to replace. He meant the world to the people of Pritchard, uh, but he meant the world to the people of Mobile. Uh, I think a lot of people underestimate his impact, not only just Pritchard, but Mobile and the state of Georgia, I mean the state of Alabama, and the United States. He met people all over the world, he talked to people, 
The thing about him was that he was a man of principles and integrity. If he gave you his word, you could take it to the bank. You knew that when you were talking to him, that what he said he was going to do. But he also would tell you in his own way that he was not going to ever compromise his principles. And you respected that about him. And I think the people respected that about him. He could talk to those individuals who had outhouses, and a lot of folks don't know what an outhouse is now, and as well as those people in the White House. He just had that ability to, to, to cross those lines with such ease and comfort and make everybody feel comfortable. Uh, and that's a very, very unique art that an individual has to be able to do that. Well, I started playing golf. Um, I met him through playing golf and I started in 2002. Had never, I was 48 years old, never seen a golf ball and I took an interest in it. And I started playing and I was led uh, to this club of black golfers in Mobile. And I joined the association. Mr. Clark was the president at that time and he took me in and he, he um, showed me some things about playing golf, how to hold the club, how to strike the ball, things like that. So I just started, you know, looking up to him. I'd, I'd never met him personally until that time, but um, I knew he was a very interesting man. The, the club itself was, was formed in, from what I understand, in 1959, in, in the late 50s. Um, the public golf courses were not open to the black golfers, the men that wanted to play golf that were of color. And so they had to play golf in parks and cow pastures and school campuses and things like that. And they would travel to Pensacola on the weekends to play. And finally they got tired of that and they challenged the, uh, the management of the public golf courses. And they filed a lawsuit and they won. At the same time, they formed a, a club called Gulf City Golfers. And they have, a, they have annual tournaments. And they also use golf. Uh, we use golf as um, a way of raising money and funds to support local charities and other um, uh, clubs, um, things like that, 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 we can, that we give money to. Mr. Clark became president of that club in 1970 and he served in that capacity since until 2010, uh, about 40 years. The club has only had four presidents over its history since 1960 and Mr. Clark was, as I said, he served for 40 years and, and um, he left some big shoes to be filled. <laughs> you know, these, these men came together to recreate and to get away from the everyday pressures of life. But under the leadership of Bill, under Mr. Clark, he also seen a way to influence um, all the other things that he loved to do, which was community activities, helping people that were in need, uh, providing scholarships. He saw a way of, of bringing golf into that. And, through you know raising funds and we provided scholarships we helped um, in our history under Mr. Clark we supported organizations like the United Negro College Fund scholarships for local um, schools like Williamson, Blunt, Tobinville we, we've done a lot of things under his leadership and he he tied that to golf and we trying to we we want to continue that legacy of supporting organizations such as that. Well, you know, there are some of us who like to be in the foreground, and others of us who like to be in the background, you know. And I guess you might say that Bill occupied a position in the middle ground. You know, he wasn't necessarily on the cutting edge up front with a lot of the things that were going on, and he wasn't in the back either, you know, but he was there and involved and played an active role in the work of the fraternity here in this community, you know. Well, you know, he had a presence about him, you know, he was reasonably tall, about the same height that I am, 6'2", 
And uh, when he walked in, you know, people kind of noticed that somebody had entered the room that you really needed to pay attention to, not just by what he said, but also by what he did, you know. And I think that's so important. You know, our actions sometimes speak louder than our words. And he was a quiet man, you know, but he had a lot in his mind that he could pass on to others who hopefully would be willing to listen. And uh, it was just a pleasure to be in his company. And, you know, you know, there are a lot of nonverbal things that go on. And sometimes you can know a lot about a person, even if he or she doesn't say a thing. I mean, just by their demeanor. And Bill had a certain demeanor, you know, that I think indicated that he was a kind-hearted person and he was concerned about others in the community, not just himself. We were very close. He was just like a second father to me. Uh, Coach Clark, uh, he was a motivator. He was an organized person. And I played basketball for him. Uh, after I graduated from college, uh, he involved me into voter registration and also with the garden program in uh, Plateau. I've never planted uh, seeds in the ground in my life. And now I have a garden at my house, and I also work with the garden on Paper Mill Road. So he got me involved in that. that that's a club with uh, plants. We have vegetables. Uh, uh, I'm a one-man uh, gardener, so I don't do anything but collard greens. But uh, the one on Paper Mill Road, uh, you have uh, turnip greens, collard greens, uh, cabbage, and they go back and then they give it to the people in the community that need. So it, it's a, a very good program. He, he started. A matter of fact, uh, he met with the agriculture, or the director of agriculture in uh, Montgomery, and he started that program. Oh, it's a great success because the people, if you know anything about Plateau Magazine, uh, well, we didn't have a whole lot of money. So uh, now when people pass by or we go through the community, they have food. You know, uh, sometimes onions, I mean, Piran, Ronnie Piran, you know, he can grow anything. So uh, it was a success and still is. If you get a chance, you go on Paper Mill Road and just take a look. As he brought together the African American sports uh, history uh, project, and that project consisted of dealing with. African American athletes, you know, Mobile has more athletes, African American athletes, especially in baseball. And he was a he was a baseball coach at one time. Uh, he not only dealt with the local community in putting this project together, he also dealt with the international people. And, and plus, we have international influence. Our we have business all over the world. And Bill just comes in with that big smile and. Everybody's just fascinated what they put together. It's the first time really on a national and international level that people through this project got to see how much influence African Americans had in, in sports in Mobile. I met Bill Clark in 1953, 54. Uh, I was his teacher. He was an excellent teacher. Calm, he was always calm. I've never heard him raise his voice. And you know coaches were famous, but I've never heard him say, as the children say, bad talk. He was just calm about everything. But he was an excellent teacher, and he was good. And the young people did all kinds of experiments in chemistry. It wasn't a book thing, you know. They actually uh, did experimentations and so forth. So he, he was always encouraging. And he was neat. And of course, uh, I guess again, old time teachers demanded, you know, everything had to be just so-so. And having come from a background like Ella Grant and then coming over to Mobile Town Training School where we were equally as, you know, strict about discipline, classwork and everything. It, it was not anything 
that you had to preach about. It was just a carryover. And that's the way he was all the time. He was ambitious, but you never noticed it, you know? It was just one of those things. He got a lot done up there at Citronelle. People adored him up there. And uh, he had to have had a strong staff because he would be in the legislature, you know, for three or four days, and that school would go right along, and he would come back, and it wouldn't skip a beat. So he was that kind of person. He was impressionable in a calm way. And like I said, he was ahead of his time. Well, when you think of uh, Representative Bill Clark or Mr. Bill Clark as I knew him, uh, he was a, a phenomenal educator in the Mobile County Public School System. He was a wonderful statesman and also a humanitarian and a real friend. As an educator, he served as a teacher, a coach, an assistant principal, and a principal. And he was a leader in everything he did in the Mobile County Public School System. He touched not only the minds, but the hearts and developed character in everyone who he taught, he coached, and those who were privileged to work with him. It's always with great respect when you hear uh, his former students talk about him and how he impacted their lives in the classroom, uh, in athletics, and in life in general. To be with the men and the women who have, have uh, known him as an educator, you hear him called Mr. Clark with great respect and Coach Clark with utmost respect. So he touched the lives of all those he came into contact with. As a person who worked with Mr. Clark, just to see his leadership skills was really an honor with great respect and admiration. He always was available to talk with people, to mentor fellow educators, and served as a real role model. When you saw Mr. Clark, you knew it was going to be a good day. His smile would light up a room. Uh, he always made everyone feel like they were the most important person in the room or who was talking to him at the time. I went to Mobile County Training School and that's where I first met Mr. Clark. Uh, of course, County uh, started in seventh grade when I went there from seven to the 12th. <clears throat> so my Probably the two areas that I was most intimately involved with him was I was in his chemistry class. And I never forget the first day, of course, of his chemistry class. Mr. Clark used to use big words. One of those words was adipose tissue. Uh, there were several other words that he used. Uh, he was always using very, very large words. And I want to say I may have taken chemistry in the 10th grade. I think the thing that stood out about him was that both in the classroom and on the football field, he never yelled, he never screamed, he never got emotional. Uh, of course, we had two other coaches, uh, Coach Charles Rose, who uh, could, could make his point very, very clearly and succinctly. And of course, there was Coach Harden, who was sort of like the, the raving general of doing things. But Mr. Clark always, Coach Clark as we call him, always was just very calm, explaining both in terms of the classroom as well as on the field in terms of how to get something done. He was a scholarly educator, and you could, not only did he share it in what he did, you could sense it in who he was. And so there was this energy about him that resonated in a way that says, always do your best. Always do your best in everything that you do. Essentially, Bill and I uh, were already aligned through our families and the relationships that we had built on all levels. I took the opportunity to know Bill more when I became the city councilman in District 4 and succeeding my father. And Bill certainly was an advocate and a supporter of my father when he was the councilman for District 4. But what Bill did essentially for me was basically give me the confidence that I could in fact fulfill my father's position because I was still a very young guy. Uh, my only involvement in politics was mostly just through being a citizen advocate, working in the community, supporting my father's campaign. But well, Bill was one of the first people that actually came and told me and gave me the confidence to know that 
I could in fact succeed my father and do the job and represent District 4. Now, I think the biggest thing that Bill did was say, if you need me, I'm here for you. Now, you don't know what that means to someone who steps in a situation that I found myself in succeeding my father, pretty much out of the blue. And for someone of his stature, someone of his knowledge and his capability to just say, look, I'm here for you if you need me. That meant the world to me. And I knew that I had a friend and an ally and someone that if I didn't quite know what I was doing or wasn't quite sure what direction to take, that was State Representative Bill Clark. But not only that, a friend of the family, Bill Clark, who was there to help guide me through. That was a tremendous push for me and it gave me all the confidence that I needed to do the job in District 4. And one of the things that I'm knowing about him was that he was a connector. He connected things together. That was his, really his strength was connecting all the pieces and looking at all the diversity and looking at how to connect it and actually come out with a really good product. One of the things that kind of struck me was the fact that there is a family life center that was built and named in his honor in Pritchard, you know. And as I was reflecting on a biblical statement that I grew up with, it's from Proverbs 6, and that's simply train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from those ways. And so I think it's so important for us at this time as we represent the legacy, reflect on the legacy of William Bill Clark, that we have to kind of be concerned about the young people who are following in our footsteps. And of course, I can honestly say that Bill Clark left some really big footsteps, footprints for other people to follow.